Today we're going to try and make a high density polyethylene mallet with an oak handle. Okay, 12 months, uh, 18 months ago, I made this uh, HDP mallet, uh, consist of mainly milk bottles as they were the quickest thing to gather in bulk. I think we can do better. The past six months during lockdown, I've been gathering milk bottle lids. Uh, they're a lot slower to gather as it's one per milk bottle, but we can have a more interesting color. Um, it's gonna be quite an interesting video. We're gonna get to use the lathe and we're gonna get to do a bit of melting. Enjoy. You will be amazed how many things are made of HDPE. Anything with this number two on the bottom of a plastic bottle. Uh, let me see if it will focus. There we go. And it, sometimes it even says HDPE. I have found shampoo bottles, milk bottles, uh, bottles of baby formula. So many things are made from HDPE. Um, when set, it will become waterproof. It becomes rock hard and I often use it for my chiseling. Now what we're gonna use, I've got an empty uh, tin can here with a nice wide diameter. I've got to give it a good clean out first. Uh, and basically what we're gonna do, set the oven to 180 degrees. We're gonna um, gradually add these milk bottle lids until they melt down. The benefit of HDPE is that as it's melting, it gives off very little fumes, which will keep the wife happy. Um, I've also got to knock up a couple of discs of plywood so that we can um, apply even clamping pressure to the top of that to compress the milk bottles to make a form. Okay guys, this has taken forever. Last time I made it, I don't remember it being this long, but for some reason, I think it's because I'm doing a bigger um, head to the mallet, but it has taken at least three hours. Um, there's starting to be a bit of a smell in the house of uh, molten plastic, um, but ultimately I think we're almost there. I'll flip the camera around and I can show you what I've got so far. Right, now the one thing I, I will recommend is I've been using two pairs of gloves. Um, this tin has become very warm. I guess it's got molten plastic in. And uh, even the oven gloves, I can feel the heat coming through. So let's get this out of the oven and see what we've got. That's looking and and that is solid all the way down. This was filled, filled right to the brim. I, I had more stock in the house here. Um, and it really has just completely condensed down. We had a slight leak down here. There's a few drips at the bottom of the oven, a few dribbles, but ultimately the tin has held up really well. I was tempted to do a, um, a wooden mold but uh, I thought with, with it being uh, heat, I don't know quite how it was going to react. And um, yeah, so let's add the disc and give it a good clamp. Right, with these being an epic fail, I got down to the shed and found these. I didn't really want to use uh, F clamps because the handles aren't quite as big. I wasn't sure I was gonna get as much leverage on it, but we'll give it a go and we'll see. Ideally, all we want to see is plastic being squeezed out the side, like you're getting a tight glue joint. <laughs> Fiddly. 
Okay, we are there. The clamps are on and uh, unexpected, it was a pig. It was tricky to do. The clamps kept slipping and uh, yeah, it was just really awkward. But we got a good amount of squeeze out. I'm happy that most of the bubble's been popped. It's nice and compressed. I'm still having to use a glove. This thing is so hot and uh, it's gonna be no good till the morning now. The core temperature is uh, gonna very slowly decrease. Um, but as it goes cooler, it will solidify. It'll be rock hard and then it'll be perfect for putting on the lathe tomorrow and uh, creating a nice shape with. But uh, yeah, sleep well and I'll see you in the morning. Okay, day two and uh, this thing has turned out even better than expected so far. I was a bit keen to see how it, how it turned out. So last night I came down and with the limited tools in my kitchen, uh, I used the tin opener and uh, I managed to take the bottom off. The coloration on the bottom of that is beautiful. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to open it, open it today, whether we use an angle grinder or a pair of tin snips, um, but we'll see what we can do. So this is nice and thin uh, metal. I'm thinking that using these uh, av aviation snips or tin snips should uh, do the trick nicely. So I'm using gloves because this metal is sharp. Yeah, it's like an old uh, corned beef tin. And if you hadn't already noticed, this tin's going to be good for nothing for the next project. So, that's a right off. Look at that. turned out as expected. Ideally, I think next time I'll use uh, a baked bean can and maybe uh, make the headstock a bit longer, but it's got a nice weight to it. I love the marbling of all the colours on the top there. Uh, it's got a nice wax finish on the uh, the handle. At the end of the day, it's, a, it's a, you know, going to be a shop tool, um, so I expect it to get a bit beaten up. But uh, no, I've really enjoyed making it. And the best bit is, uh, it's 100% recycled materials. The oak I had lying around and uh, all the milk bottle lids uh, would have gone into landfill. Okay, thank you uh, for watching the video. Always remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.